Hello YouTube, this is Monsana and welcome to a another video to continue a series I started two years ago. Two years ago I made this video, Connor Super Pokemon Teams, which was basically like what if the East Kai Quartet characters, or at least for the show, had Pokemon teams based on either looks, abilities, and just traits. And I kind of just never continued that series after Konosuba, not because I didn't want to do it, but mostly because I had no motivation to try and continue make planning teams. But now I have planned every single team, not just for ReZero, but for Tanya and Overlord. I'm not going to do Shield Hero yet. That's another time. For now, I'm just going to stick to shows uh, that uh, don't make WhatsApp. So yeah, today we have ReZero. And I'm actually going to go back to Colosseum real quick because I kind of wanted to go back and just fix a couple things. So yeah, as you can see, I just wanted to get that one little update. One of the magic cards, I know, double useless. You have two magic cards on the team. Although Cosmog is actually, I think, a bit more useless since it can't learn any other move. Uh, and same with Cosmo, it's pretty useless as well. But we're talking about Magikarp here, a fish Pokemon. I think only one of them needs to be on the team at this point. I know I did Mega Me with like two Voltorbs and an Electro, you know, bugger me now. But no, I wanted to change one of those Magikarp to become a um, Manaphy. Because Manaphy kind of gives me more Water Goddess vibes. Just saying, like, it's very Water goddess -y. What a, uh, Water goddess -y, I guess. It's kind of useless. I don't know. I don't really use Manaphy much. I've never seen many people use Manaphy. It's more so just like a cute extra Pokemon that just exists out there. It's mythical, so it's kind of a goddess in a way. So yeah, I can I can see why people kind of consider Manaphy as a decent choice for Aqua. So of course, now that that's out of the way, let's begin with the Re Zero Pokemon teams. <laughs> So let's make this kind of shortish, but at least descriptive. So Yamask and Kofugus. Yamask sees its own reflection and it cries. To me, Subaru would probably do that. If he saw his own reflection, he would cry because Yamask is also that of a dead person, which kind of symbolizing Subaru's continuous deaths over and over and over again. He's been through a lot, and I'm sure your mask has, his your mask has probably been through a lot as well. And Copperigus, its own evolution, has literally shadow hands. The unseen hands in a Pokemon. It fits way too well for him. Not just because of Battle Goose slash Beetlejuice, as many call him. But simply, he was able to use it in Season 2. Um, I also put in Sobble, going back to that crying thing. I feel like that would be his, like, one partner at the beginning of a journey. Like, it, like as soon as his first death happens, he meets a Sobble. Like, it's that sort of thing of just, oh. Yeah, that, that thing's gonna stay with you for a while. And I feel like if he did develop more, I have not seen too much of the light novel. Um, I've not even seen the light novel not any continuation after season two so at the moment i'm only but i feel like if he did develop way more that sobble could evolve and i don't want to put jazal yet neither in Terion, but i feel like he could develop into that uh Komo, literally come on 
Come on. It's literally the same Pokemon. Then, Hatami literally just represents the witches in a way. And how his version not only came from a witch, who also looks extremely like the love of his life. Also, Hatterin has, I think, the Pokedex entry saying it will silence you if you f just for vibes. <laughs> so, in a way, I could kind of see Subaru kind of being silenced because not only does Hatterin have the hand, but when Subaru tries to mention his abilities, the hand silences him because he just shouldn't be allowed to say it. And that's kind of cool. I think that's just a, like a really good Pokemon for him. Like that's way too good for him actually. And last but not least, there's no complete reason why I chose the shiny, but shiny Celebi. Celebi is a time travel Pokemon. Subaru time travels after death. Now, I don't know, again, the full context, all I know is Season 2 kind of delved in the idea that maybe his return by death is a parallel universe rather than he just resets time. But I like that idea, and still Celebi kind of fits there. And, okay, maybe I lied, Shiny kind of has a reason. It's pinkish, and even though it's more purple, Amelia kind of has that kind of sort of color in my opinion, and green, which just doesn't fit Subaru in a way. I feel like the pinkish could work, and kind of remind him that, you know, he's got to keep doing this for Amelia, and literally everyone else, but mostly for Amelia. <laughs> Of course, speaking of Amelia, we have Amelia's team, which the first Pokemon is literally a lookalike. Mian Xiao. Come on. Just, 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 come on. Yeah, I know, I know. It, 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 it really looks like Amelia. I don't really know too much about Mian Xiao. I barely use it. Don't think I've ever used a Mian Xiao in my life, but to me, that just screams Amelia by the looks of it. Frostlass, it's a female Pokemon that is very capable of, you know, using ice. I know apparently she kind of like uses some sort of fire magic or something to kind of make that ice, but I couldn't really think too much on who would fit, but yeah. We'll talk about lookalikes, Puck, we got to use that Meowth. I was trying to think of like, like to me, Mew kind of works as a Puck, but then I was like, I don't want to give everyone a mythical Pokemon, please. That's for another video. But, you know, it's Puck. Absol? Absol's an interesting one. Not only does it have that white colour and blue goes into purple, but Absol is said to bring disaster wherever it goes, and that's kind of unfortunately true for Amelia. Everywhere she goes, there's some sort of disaster. It's not even Subaru's fault. It's just everything's a disaster. And it can mostly end up to either hers or someone else's deaths to for her own name even when she was young that kind of happened so again very much you know a a media pokemon a lot of nine tails another sort of feminine pokemon i feel like she would definitely like i looked at a lot of nine tails i was like yeah you would definitely use that and I know I mentioned before about the whole fire thing, and Alone in Ninetales kind of fits in that sense because Ninetales was a fire type. Oh, 
convert it to its alone form, it becomes an ice fairy type, which is one of my favourite types actually. Uh, not ice usually, but I like the combo. And last but not least, I did give her a mythical. I know. You, you, you said you won't give him you because you won't give everyone a mythical. But no, I gave her a mythical. The Yancey. It's Princess A, which isn't 100% her, but we'll go with it. Also, it's pink. Pink, purple, you know, sort of cuddle scheme. Going back to that. Haha. <laughs> and also, she does have Puck in a gem. And to, and that's one of her, like her biggest like one of the key points in her design. The RC is literally just a big crystal. Yeah, you could make the argument of carving, but the RC is more of a feminine sort of princessy style Pokemon. So, yeah. <laughs> Now going on to the maids, Ram and Ram, Ram's my favourite by the way. So I didn't give them a full team each, as you saw, because I feel like they would have like a split in their team. Uh, they would have three each basically, and you would double battle them so you kind of fight six Pokemon. Um, Rem and Ram will use Minon in female Indeedee and Latios for Rem, and Ram will use a Plusle male Indeedee and a Latias. It's kind of simple, really. So, of course, Plusle and Minon, they're the twin sort of Pokemon. Blue and red. Rem and Ram. Easy as that. Female Indeedy and male Indeedy, however, kind of like the maid sort of the maid and the butler sort of Pokemon. I know you could technically say both of them should then have the female Indeedy, but in my defense, Ram is not as feminine in a lot of like comparing the sisters. Rem is a lot more feminine, and Ram is mostly just you know. Masculine. Well, I feel like she's a mix, but more masculine than men at least. And Latios and Latias. Another legendary, but come on, the blue and the red fit. Also, it's interesting because Latios is given to the more feminine one, while it's Latias is given to the more, at least a bit more masculine one. Simply, I don't know why that worked out. <laughs> so they kind of got a bit of each other. Um, it would be more interesting if maybe they were swapped as well. Like, they swapped Latios and Latias. So, of course, Rem had Latias. And Ram had Latios. Like, signifying that their sister is always there. But who's Rem when... You've got Latios on Ram, you know? Kind of doesn't work. I was going to do something joking about who's Ram, sort of a forgetting style Pokemon, but I can't think of anything, so we're stuck with these guys for, for now. <laughs> Gotharita, Vivian, and Mushana. I'm doing these three lot first because they're all based on looks alone. In a sense, the Lolita sort of style I think really matches with Gotharita. Vivian, literally the butterfly eyes, and sometimes butterflies are incorporated around Beatrice's design. Uh, at least not her main design, but usually to do with art for her. And Mushana just literally looks like it could be her sidekick sort of thing. Like the sort of thing that would be always in the library with her. Spirit Tomb also is locked away at all times. She has been told to lock herself away. That's Beatrice's sort of thing. And when you mix like a Spirit Tomb 
who also is supposed to walk, walk away, I feel like she could relate. Another thing with Spirit Tomb is, well, what is it? It's spirits. Beatrice is a spirit, so again, works. I also gave her a toga kiss. In a way, I feel like she would have had that sort of thing. It's an Beatrice is one of those I don't know too much about because again, she was only briefly explored more so in the second season, like quite late into that season. But in a way, I feel like she can. It's like a Pokemon that's ready to open up, and it's a fairy sort of thing. So I feel like she would probably use it. She'd probably just have it more stationary rather than flying all around. She'd keep it a bit more stationary, like kind of like um, the games in a way. And last but not least, I know I keep saying I don't want to do this, but I had to. ReZero has just got a lot of broken characters. Who am I ever going to get into right now? Just now. Hoopa. Bound and Unbound. Now, not separate Pokemon, the same Pokemon. In a way, Hoopa is literally bounded. It's not even in a way. That, that thing is bounded. And, again, Beatrice is bounded to the library. And when she is gone from the library when it's gone what happens she's a lot stronger she's with someone she's able to protect them she's able to attack for them and that kind of gives me unbound vibes so in a way hoopa represents the development that she got from being bounded to unbounded by i guess the promises she was told Now, I don't know too much about World War, and I know you guys don't know too much on that team there, because I missed one out. That will be at the very end, for reasons. But, his character is a lot of things. I know, of course, his crush and lover was Echidna, so he has connections there. So we're going to have to connect him to which he has made. So we're gonna have to connect him to Maid. His magic is, I believe, Earth, Wind, Fire. So we're gonna have to connect him to that. And of course, his design motif is a clown and also is a very annoying and malicious and evil person, but also kind of secretive in a way because he seems sus, but then it's like, he does things that aren't as sus. So there's a lot of things. Let's have a look. Clown motif. This will not properly represent the fire. We'll get to that later. But I feel like if he was to send out a Pokemon, and I mean, come on, it's an Ultra Beast. I feel like this dude will go out of his way to get an Ultra Beast. Everyone else has mythicals. This guy goes out of his way and gets an Ultra Beast. You know, he just goes a step further. He's like, let's just go to a different realm. You know? I'm going into the earth, the wind, and the fire. I'm going to do Garchomp, Corviknight, and Houndoom. So, Garchomp. Cynthia had a Garchomp. Cynthia kind of reminds me a bit, in a way, I guess, of Kidna by Black Outfit, simply. And also, her Garchomp was annoying. It fits three slots on what makes Roswell, in a way. So we got the Earth Magic. We got the crush on Echidna. So we had the... In a way, it's like an extra layer. It's not on the Pokemon itself, it's more like an extra layer. But... The Echidna part's there. And also, Garchomp was annoying. Just like him. He is annoying. Corviknight. It's more so now Subaru has been knighted, so in a way, like this manners sort of group is 
Elise has now a knight on them. But also I feel like this just Roswell just flying off with a Corv Knight and just kinda looks cool, you know? Not even on the Corv Knight, it's just next to him. But last but not least, we got Houndoom. Houndoom kind of takes off another box other than fire. It Reminds me of a more malicious Pokemon. Like, it looks pretty, like, ooh, I'm cool. But also, it's kind of like behind it, there might be some dark content. And although Puchiena would fit more, it reminds me a lot of Arc 2 when the literal villain was a dog. You know, it was a dog. And who saved Subaru in the end? Was Wall did. Yay! Got the tell. We got the maids. Also, we kind of, again, could work a bit more for Echidna and that relation, but I feel like it just more so represents the maids in general. Not just Rev and Ram, but all of them. Now we can get to the one you've all been waiting for Shiny Mega Gengar. Just br just bring Wall right back here. Shiny Mega Gengar just works. It's white, just like it's G-Max as well. Not its regular form. So on the inside it's unchanged. Which I feel like Rosball will probably be not that much changed on the inside. It might have changed on the outside, but it ain't changed on the inside for well. But also, it's just a very evil, the big smile, kind of got that clown vibe in there. The pale white, the just the pink also could remind me of, like, Amelia in a way, like her purple, sort of white and purple, like the pink again. Also, just literally Gengar in general fits Wall's Wall. I feel like that's like his ace, the shiny Mega Gengar. Just brings that thing out, you know you're done for. Like, I feel like he just immediately Megas, like, he just throws it out and it's Megaring at the same time as it's being released. Like, that is scary. And also in a way, it's more of an external thing again. Kind of like how I did Garchomp, but more so on the character. In season two, one of my favorite scenes is Ram taking the book away from Moswell, and that scene that almost made her die. Dang, bro. Makes sad, bro. But Gengar, to me, could work in that. Take away that Mega Stone, that Gengar, right? away from it, and it just changes back into someone else. To that person who may need to reconsider what they've been doing now. And to me, that fits. I know I didn't get the book sort of thing, but I feel like the Mega Stone could be. The book, it's a held item that you usually do not want to take off unless you were changing your mega. And believe me, I know that feeling. I I used to keep a mega stone pretty much on all my Pokemon. Same with Z crystals, but we don't talk about those. Anyway, so yeah. So, there you have it. That's all I can do. I know I didn't do Beto boy. But I feel like I could do that in a separate video in the future if I ever wanted to. For now, that's the best I got. <laughs> this took me ages to make, so I'm sorry. So yeah, that's it. That's all the teams. Tell me what you think, and is there anyone you change or maybe update? I kind of don't want to give everyone like legendaries. Um, all that sort of thing. I know you could give like Subu Palkia or something like that, but I didn't want to do that because that's just too much, you know? Anyway, 
Bye. <laughs> no. Bye, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.